Well, I brought a cane. I bought it online a few years ago. I'm not a cane collector, but when I saw all these fantastic creatures on it, I had to have it. I think there are 35 of them. They just jump right out at me. I just collect things that appeal to me and uh, aren't terribly expensive. The first thing I like to do when I evaluate a cane is to actually pick it up. Okay. And I do that because of the fact I like to feel the weight of it. Uh -huh. That tells me a lot about the cane. And okay. this is very, very light. And it tells me that this is probably carved of white pine or possibly basswood. Uh, both woods are indigenous to North America and both are easy to work. Okay. So it was uh, the carver's wood of choice. Okay, uh, typically. that makes sense. And let's take a look at this marvelous uh, piece of art here, uh, <laughs> starting with the top where you have this wonderful a crocodile or alligator, uh -huh. you have rattlesnakes, mm -hmm. you have several of these detailed horny toads, yeah. all species that are indigenous to North America. Mm -hmm. And going down the cane, we see more snakes, more lizards. Mm -hmm. We have this wonderful spider here. There's negative space underneath the legs. Right. So he just didn't carve it as a lump on the piece of wood, he actually got under the legs and delineated each right. leg. You go right down to the bottom, the metal ferrule mm -hmm. is still intact, which would have been uh, put on most canes to help protect the bottom so it wouldn't splinter. When we look at a cane like this, we try to identify it as part of a body of work. Mm -hmm. Because someone who made this cane clearly wasn't an amateur. Right. We don't know who the carver is. That's the interesting thing. You'd think that you wouldn't stop with just one. He didn't, but I haven't seen one. He probably was working in the trades, possibly in a carving shop, mm -hmm. probably around 1890, mm -hmm. 1900. It's very complex. You see these snakes, it really looks and feels like the snake is wrapped around the uh, vines, yeah. is engulfing the cane. We look at canes and we sometimes judge them as good, better, best. Mm -hmm. And I, I think clearly this falls into the best category. Oh, wow. Cane collectors, some of them like the idea that they're polychrome painted. Yes. Yeah. And cane carvers, it's my theory, mm -hmm. my belief that some of these carvers did not paint them intentionally because oh. you had this thick lead paint back in the 19th century, yep. and all of this detail would just disappear. Disappear, If sure. it was painted. In terms of valuation, do you have any idea? No, um, I didn't pay a lot for it. What did you and, pay? Uh, I paid 250 sh plus shipping, I think. I noticed that it had horn toads, uh -huh. and it had alligators, and the alligators are more eastern Gulf, U.S., mm -hmm. and horned toads are arid desert, and they meet in Louisiana. So I thought maybe it was a Louisiana cane. It's hard to pinpoint it that way. Some of these are the experience of the carver, where he grew up, where he is now. Could it's have migrated. A, yeah, it's a combination sometimes. I think in today's market, a fair retail valuation for this would be six to eight thousand dollars. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, I had absolutely no idea. Oh, great, that's fantastic, yeah. thank you.